Hey there, Dr. Dave here again with another TI-84 Plus tutorial. In this tutorial I want to look at uh, using the TI-84 Plus to model sine uh, functions. So I'll start off by looking at some stuff we'll do on typical paper first before we actually move over to using the calculator. So here we've got a model of a, or a sine model. Uh, y equals 12.5 sine 0.352x minus 22 plus 25. Okay, this one, not necessarily representing anything in, in particular, uh, I just came up with this one to demonstrate a few different ideas. So what we want to do, given a sine equation like this, or a model like this, we want to rearrange it to get it into this form here, okay, where we've got uh, the a, the coefficient of the sine function, the d, the number that we're adding at the end here, and in particular we've got this form here, we've got the b, times x minus c. So if we compare these two, we're almost the same except for what we've got inside the brackets. So this one we've got uh, the, the number times x and then subtract another number. We haven't quite got it into this form here. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to divide the 22 by this number here. So 22 divided by 0 0.352 gives us a number of 62.5. That then becomes the number C here. Okay, so a simple little rearrangement we need to do to go from this form into this form here. And again, the reason why we're doing it, converting it into this form is then we can then read the numbers directly off to tell us various bits of information. So for example, remember the A represents the amplitude, and we'll return to that in a moment. Okay, so rewriting that, the equation now is in the form, uh, this form here. So as I said, there are only real major change is that this number here becomes 62.5 okay so the number the a doesn't change the number at the end doesn't change right so given this form we can now work out things like the amplitude the period uh, horizontal translation vertical translation and a lot of this is simply reading off the numbers so first step amplitude that's just the number a so in this case it's 12.5 the period to work out the period we divide 2 pi by the number here, the b, which in our case is 0.352. So 2, two pi divided by 0.352 is 17.8 to one decimal place. Okay, so we've done a bit of rounding there. The horizontal translation is just this number here. Now being very careful to make sure that we've got a, a negative or a subtraction there. If that was a, a plus there, then the number we'd come up with here would be in fact c equals minus 62.5. So careful there, make sure we've got a subtraction there, otherwise we need to do the conversion. The vertical translation, which also corresponds to our principal axis, is comes from the fact that d equals 25. Okay, so the line y equals 25 will be the line that cuts our sine curve in, in half. Okay, last couple of calculations then, our maximum value we can calculate by adding D, so the principal axis, adding the amplitude to that. So we've got 25 plus 12.5 gives us 37.5. Our minimum value is the principal axis, subtract the amplitude, which 25, take 12.5, gives us 12.5. Okay, so now we've got our major or main values of interest. So what we want to do now is graph this and then solve typical standard sort of problem is working out what values of x, or for what values of x, uh, does our graph cross the line y equals 30. Right, so let's fire up the calculator. So first step, put in this equation, doesn't really matter which form we put it in, whether it's this form or this second form here. Uh, so I'll just use the first, first form. As I said, it doesn't matter which of these we choose. 3, 5, 2. Click our variable there, subtract 22, close the brackets, and then add 25 to that. Okay, now I'm going to just make sure that I'm in the right mode. So we go down and click here. I want to be in radians mode instead of degrees, so in this case we're fine. So quit out of there again. Let's go back into the graphing situation, so the Y equals button. Okay, so I want to graph that, but before that I do that, I want to set up the window to actually correctly display it. So I'll click on the window button, 
So the minimum x value, I want to show just over one cycle. So I'm going to start off x equals zero, and I'm going to make sure I include at least one cycle. Now the period here is 17.8, so I need a number I could choose 17.8 to get exactly one cycle. I'll just go up to 20, so I've got a little bit more. And I'll change the scale. Uh, I'll put a, a tick every two units. Okay, x minimum and y minimum. Here's, here's where we use the maximum minimum values. So the minimum is 12.5, so I'll just go to 10 here. Again, just give me a little bit of leeway each side. And I'll go up to a maximum of 40. And for my y scale, again, I'll put a tick every uh, two units should, should do it. And now we're in a situation where we graph that. And you can see we've got just over one cycle. If I want to actually do two cycles here, I'll click go from 0 up to 40. Again, graph that. There we are. So we can see the repeated. So it actually probably better shows the repeated behavior that we're getting. Right, so to actually answer this question, so for what values of x between 0 and 20, so up to about, well, I guess 20 is about here, somewhere about the midway point, does y equals 30? To answer that using the graphics calculator, we put in a second equation. We graph the line y equals 30. Go back into graphing. We can see the line y equals 30 there. So visually, we can see that's going to be one point there. And that's going to be another point. So to answer that precisely, what we'll do, go into calculator, or calculate, sorry, we'll work out point of intersection. We're going to pick our first curve being the sine curve, the second one will be the straight line, and we're going to put in a guess. The guess we want to work out this one firstly. Click enter, and you can see the first point of intersection is when x is equal to 10.1. Okay, if we round that to one decimal place. Repeat the calculation. I want to then work out the second point of intersection. Again, first curve is the uh, sine curve. Second curve is a straight line. We'll move our guess over. Click on enter. And there we go. Second value is 16.7. So an easy way using our graphics calculator to work out the two points of intersection. Let's just check a couple other things. So I want to just double check my maximum and minimum values. So again I can use calculations to do that. Let's just have a look at the minimum. So minimum, again we want to select a left bound. Now I'm going to choose this point down here. Can't quite see it with the text in the way but click enter. Right bound I'll move around, around the curve. Enter, guess, we'll click enter again. And after a bit of thinking, we've got a value of uh, x is equal to 9.48. Okay, and the y value, which is what we what we had here, minimum value of 12.5. So we've actually, in, in fact, got the x value as well. All right. Hopefully that should be of some help to those out there who are wanting to do some modelling of sine curves using graphic calculator and so forth. All right. Until next time. Uh, catch you later.